And the reason why this is my number one rule is because social media <laughs> has a stronghold over us all. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we are going to be looking at the four tips, and these are like essential tips <laughs> for you to follow if you want to build a classic handbag collection. Now this video is going to be especially helpful to anyone who is just starting out because I feel like, and when I think back to when I first bought my, my, my very first handbag, you know, it was a little bit overwhelming because there's so much to choose from and sometimes particular things might capture your eye, but you're not thinking long term, you're thinking in the moment. Which sometimes, for a lot of us, when you make a purchase on impulse and for that particular moment, you saw something, you're like, oh my gosh, you saw it on someone else and you're like, oh my gosh, I really want it. And, and these are all things that can influence our purchases and in the long run, make us regret them. So these are four essential tips you should follow if you would like to build a classic handbag collection, one that is going to stand the test of time. You want something that is going to allow you in, let's say five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years time to look at it and still be like, you know what? I'm still gonna pick up that bag because it's a great bag. So I'm gonna give you four tips, but before we get into those tips, if you are not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing and turning on post notifications so you never ever miss a video. I post them every Saturday at the moment and we focus on fashion and luxury. Without further ado, let's dive into my first tip. Right, this tip, guys, is the most important tip of all, okay? <laughs> when I mean it's important, I mean it's super duper 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 important because I have been there. I've made this mistake myself. And it is when we see something on an influencer and think, oh my gosh, I love it. I want it. And we go and purchase it. Do not ever, 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 ever buy a bag that has been gifted to an influencer. That is my number one rule. And the reason why this is my number one rule is because social media <laughs> has a stronghold over us all. And sometimes when we see people with things, we're like, oh my gosh, yay. So please do not ever buy a bag that has been gifted to an influencer because remember, that influencer isn't gonna come on here and be like, yeah, Gucci just gave me this bag. I hate it. I'm never gonna wear it. No, they're never gonna say that. They're gonna say, oh my gosh, I love it so much. Thank you so much, Gucci. Yay, hoo hoo hoo, free bag, <laughs> you know, with a, People like you and I are now seeing this. We're gonna be, oh, that looks so good on them. And we're gonna go spend the full price for that particular bag. So do not ever buy something that an influencer has been gifted because nine times out of 10, they make the video unboxing it, talking about how amazing it is. And then they will never ever wear it. It, it was for free, you know, no skin off their face, right? By coming on here and talking about a bag that they've been given for free. Heavily gifted bags tend to be in that moment amazing and you see them all over and all the influencers carrying around this particular handbag and then that's it that's the end of that <laughs> never to be seen again on any of their pages and it all kind of they all have the same life expectancy if you notice and obviously it's it's a way of marketing and that's how nowadays marketing works so <laughs> Uh, this is a bad tip for anyone trying to market anything. I'm sorry. If you want to send me free handbags, I will sit here and talk about the free handbags like I like, no, actually, no, I couldn't do that. My next rule, and now this one is a little bit, uh, <laughs> because we all love color. Well, sometimes some of us love colors. I'm going through a color phase at the moment, but you guys would know if you've been here from day one, I was very anti-color for a very, very long time. And I'm still, if I had to start my collection all over again and, and I'd still be exactly the same way, I wouldn't change that fact about me. And the reason why I wouldn't change that is because I feel like getting your neutral colors, as boring as some people might actually think they are, those neutral colors are gonna be the colors that stand the test of time. In 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, your neutral colors will always be in, okay? A neutral color can never go out of fashion, out of style, out of anything. We love neutrals. <laughs> I do anyway. Whereas colorful bags, for example, my low ever puzzle bags, you know. Oh, I'm missing my yellow one, I just realized. It's on the stairs. Beautiful, 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 beautiful bags. Obviously, I'm not saying don't buy color, but if you want to build a base and you don't have disposable income. When I was buying my neutral handbags, I couldn't afford to buy 
bright colored bags on top of that as well. And that's why you find with my Birkins, with my Kellys, I tend to keep them on the neutral side because I couldn't afford to spend 6,000 pounds or seven or eight or however much the Birkins and Kellys are now on a bag that I would only wear for a certain time period. And neutrals, as far as I'm concerned, they're not hard to style up and play around with. You know, take the black Birkin, for example. You can make it colorful. You can add twillies onto it to add that pop of color. You can add the rodeos. You can add charms to it to make it more fun. It doesn't have to be boring, you know, just a plain black bag like so. So I do recommend sticking to neutral colors. So things like beige, black, or browns. Those are the type of colors. White as well. White is a good one. Oh, who doesn't love a white bag? <laughs> Do you remember the days where everyone used to be scared of carrying around a white, white bag? Now we all love a good white bag. And that's why I said if I had to start my whole handbag collection again, it would be exactly the same way. Yes, I made my mistakes when it comes to my blue Birkin. I would say that is a mistake, but we're learning to live with that. If I was offered a blue Birkin now, would I take it? Probably not, unless it was in the right shade of blue and smaller. I think that's my issue with my Birkin 30, as I've said in the past. It's just too big for me and too bright of a color. I like smaller things or smaller bags in the bright colors. And then, you know, it's cool because it goes with my outfit and it just adds a little bit of oof. There you go, you got your pop of color there. Tip number three, guys. This one, <laughs> oh, you, got, you gotta be careful sometimes when you say certain things because, you know, people take things quite personally and they feel like you're attacking them. I'm not attacking anyone, I'm not, you know. But it is factual, okay? Something that has logos all over it is not a classic item. It's not something that's gonna be looked at in five years time with like, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. No, 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 no. Anything with a logo on it has the chance of becoming really outdated because brands are constantly evolving and constantly changing. Something you might buy today with a particular logo in a couple of years time will look really, really outdated because they've changed their logo, they've rebranded. And it's things like that you wanna stay away from. So you don't want any bags with huge logos on it, Things like the Birkin, okay, <laughs> with the little brand on the top there, that's absolutely fine. You know, the Sac de Jour, you've got that as well. Chanel is Chanel, okay, even though, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I do feel like Chanel's a bit loud for me. I get my days where I really just wanna be incognito. I wanna carry something that nobody knows what it is. Gucci, you know, the Gucci print all over the bangs. So you stay away from that. Things with big buckles that have the B on them, stay away from that, i.e. the Balenciaga hourglass bag. I, 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 that, that bag is just one bag I despise. <laughs> when I see it, I'm like, I really don't like you. <laughs> I really don't like that bag. You don't wanna go for those crazy, outrageous shapes. You basically want bags that are quite simple in shape, nothing too crazy and weird like I'm sorry, I go back to it, the hourglass bag. My last and final tip is all to do with the beautiful, shiny crystalness of life. <laughs> anything with sequins on it, anything that's shiny, anything that glistens. You know the Prada bags? Prada's bags, and that they, they, they've just got their, their crystal bags nailed to the T. I think they are absolutely gorgeous. Would I buy one? No, because for me, I know it's gonna be something that I might wear now, but give it a couple of years, I'm gonna look at it and think, why did I buy that? Like seriously, why on earth did I just spend all that money on a bag that I hardly ever wore? It doesn't make sense. And you're gonna wanna stay clear of shiny, you know, metallic, things like that. Stay away from, okay? Unless you have a bigger collection and you have that variety that all of us dream about having, you know, the 30 plus handbags. <laughs> Go for it. Everything is very, very trend focused nowadays. You want to stay clear of the trendy items, those shiny, bright, beautiful items that you just look at it oh, <laughs> like a magpie. Oh, shiny, yay. Or that thingy from um, Fantastic Beasts. That's one of my favorite movies. Uh, and the notebook. Yeah, but anyways, I'm digressing. <laughs>
Anyway guys, that's my four tips. I hope this video has helped you a little bit. Please just always think about where you see a particular item before purchasing it in a good few years time. If you don't see yourself wearing that item and really, really think about it, okay? Don't just see something and purchase it at an instance because sometimes, and I know with myself, there's certain things that I've avoided buying for a time period and then I'm like, oh, thank God I didn't do that. You know, thank goodness. I'm so happy I didn't do that because right now, if I did do that, then I would probably be regretting it because I would never ever use it. So I think just take the time to really think about something and give yourself a good few months before making that final purchase and that final decision, okay, that's the bag. That's going to be the start of my collection or that's going to be a bag that I add to my collection, you know, really, really take the time to think about it because yeah, sometimes we, we do make those mistakes and I've made those mistakes too in the past, you know, when I bought my Chanel Jumbo, not to say there was anything wrong with the bag per se, but it was just too big. And at that time I didn't think about the size of the bag. If anything, I thought bigger, better, <laughs> which isn't always the case. So <laughs> avoid mistakes like that. Thank you so, so much for watching guys. I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful rest of the weekend and a beautiful start to the week. I shall catch you in next week's video. Take care. Bye.